all going to learn and how it goes through there. So, you know, very often I'm very jealous of the state farm. They have all this power to do everything, and they're already reminding me when we're at these events that I think sometimes she wishes she was, you know, to do your own thing, <laughs> make some things happen. And we kind of do things a little bit differently here. And uh, our, we're officially owned by John Q. Hammond, so we are a franchisee, so it's not corporate Marriott that mandates what we do here. We are um, driven by standards of Marriott, and Marriott does some amazing things. And I think in the last few years, they've really worked towards actual green initiatives versus just the greenwashing that we see in the accomplishments is becoming one of those. And so from a corporate standpoint, they're starting to do it, and it's trickling down to the franchisees like us. Um, Hammond zones close to 80 hotels across the United States, and it's all different brands. It's Hilton, and Yamada, and Sheraton. So I could easily leave this Marriott environment and go work over in East Peoria at the Hilton Embassy Suites. So what we do, because of that, there is no set, here's our green philosophy, this is what we're going to do, and this is the composting piece. So when we roll it out here, Michael Grady, who used to be with ISU and the grounds for retired, came to me and then said, hey, we're looking at rolling this out within the community, and we would love to have you as a partner. The town of Normal has been in the forefront of moving this forward and really pushing some items. And they needed someone other than the big state farm in the world to show the small businesses, hey, you can do it, it's worthwhile as well. So we started to look at it and looked at Midwest Fiber, and I'm very much into um, everything that's sustainable and how it does. And my role is to try to figure out how to, how to get it through and approved or hidden through and have it happen so that we can make it happen in our hotel and then get it up and running. So we looked at it and we looked at the cost and we wanted to be on the forefront of it. We wanted to be able to use our name and say, hey, look, they're doing some of the other hotels in town will do it. For us, our cost is $300 a month and it's $3,600 a year and it's not a huge cost. And we'll talk in a moment kind of how that offsets. But it truly, there's still a cost to us. It's not going to completely offset that or you just look purely tonnage going from what you're diverting from the landfill to what we're putting there. And it doesn't equal out that there's so many benefits that are sort of hidden benefits that are hard to put into a business plan to my leaders. And for our company, we were run up until just a week ago, um, it's been up for a while, but he was 94 years old before he passed away a week ago, Mr. Hams. And it was still very much an old school mentality thinking and it was all business, business, business. So a lot of stuff that we put through, if I was to come to them with this and say, hey, we're going to do this, it would take me years to try to go. So I literally just did it and just rolled it through. And now that we do it, it's a part of who we are, our total culture of the town, we're able to go back and sort of warrant it on the back end. And that's how we've been able to do it. And as we try to push other hoteliers as well. Um, for us, and then it really comes down to how do we show that it's working? So we've been flipping. Me and the staff are actually, and I love this one, it's my dishwasher with all this stuff. But instead of having the scraps that are coming back from um, after they've eaten in the cafeteria or Most of ours comes on the front end, and we do all of our food here, it's all fresh. So um, no matter what part it is, it is, uh, we, you know, we trim every strawberry, we don't buy it pre-sliced, we don't buy it again, we're peeling it all, and not all hotels do that. So the bulk of our waste is coming in these, uh, and the, the front end before the food is served. And we do about a little over $4 million worth of business a year in the convention center. This is actually the town's convention center. We run it and we waste it from them, but for the town. So again, we have a little bit of rules of what we can institute, what we can, and so we've been able to do this. Next slide. So we ended up with three 90 gallon tubs, um, and we placed them. The middle one, our sous chef there, that is between our dish room and our bank, our back banquet line, and it's right where they prep everything. And there's another one that's over on the side, on the other side of the prep area, and then the final one we put up by the dish machine. So if we look at our scraps, and this was just taken the other day, this is what we see. So we see fresh fries that are actually cooked and were out on the line, uh, or that we didn't serve, and they came back, and then the strawberries and the fresh fruits and the onion peels and all that. So that's our bulk of it. The rest of it that comes to us will be when we break down our breakfast with way in the morning. So the heavy stuff, like the coffee grinds and stay farm, we have oatmeal. So we have the big things of oatmeal that you know, we pre-make and we come out. That's the heavy stuff that helps us to So one part is we weigh it there, and this is a great number for us. It's 276 pounds of one of our cards, which is just a substantial amount. From 
the time we started, our first year, we did 56,000 pounds, so roughly 23 tons? Oh, no, almost 30 tons, so 27 tons. And then last year, we did 60,000 um, pounds, so it was 30 tons of food scrap that we were able to produce out of our little facility, which really are small when you look at the big world and everything that's out there. So that's our goal. If we were to do every container twice a week, three of those, we would be upwards of 40 to 45 tons a year. So we think we still have a lot of room to grow, and we've got some next steps that we're looking at. Um, as we said, we do the three. This is just simply Midwest Fiber. You will see some pictures that are the same from Harry and I in a moment here. Um, again, Midwest Fiber has been great to work for. Uh, I know in the other areas, uh, I believe Andy was saying, or maybe it was Karen, that they cleanse the, the containers and they come back. We don't have that with the bags, so we clean our own, but again, we're only three small containers. So as we try to sell it to the local, to the other people that I do business with here, trying to bring them in and show them how they can financially do this and how feasible and how it works for them in the long run, I think is my biggest goal. And then here's a picture of the truck at the ISU farm. Let's switch to the next one. I think Artie, you were there the day we went out there to a bowl. We watched them dump this, that middle one there. And it's pretty unique to look and see when it's done. You know, we have zero problems with bugs or animals. And that was one of our greatest concerns here is, again, the health inspectors who wants to keep the rating. We're at AAA, Four Diamond Hotel, and we're only one south of Chicago. And if all of a sudden we have something that hits the paper that we have these health issues from bugs or other things, it doesn't look like that. We start to get really worried and, and we can hit zero with that. And I think that it's, it's great for us to be able to say, because it's taken so often, and because it's in the bag, and we have none of those problems. And that's just a picture of the big mixer, the grinder. I thought it was amazing. There's a certain, you know, as you know, so much brown waste and green waste if you get your optimal program. And then again, just more pictures, some of the same ones that we saw on our uses, the, the piles out there. Now, one of the things that they talked to us about there, and you brought it up earlier, I believe, is we were talking about the bags and the compost items that are in there. And that was one of the questions that we asked. But, you know, it doesn't compost as quick as the others. Because we have, and this is one thing we've done with us, we have the compostable to go container, so we eliminate all of our styrofoam, the eco sleeves, and the corn made plasticware. The reality is that we do not put a lot of this in from our front of the house and put it into there simply because it becomes a contaminant that does take too long to break down. So we do this with the landfill breakdown, and we try to that way maintain our back of the house and to not have it be contaminated. We've been very lucky. I think when we first started and we did our education, that was my greatest fear is how do I control my dishwasher? I'm making $9 an hour and he just doesn't really care. His job is to get things done and they're dumping these items in there off of the buffets to not put other items in there. And I was absolutely amazed at the fact that we saw very, very little of that. So. And from the front of the house, the restaurant service will scrape off their items when we break down the breakfast buffet or twice a week lunch buffet. Our concierge comes down. We keep it all to that solid waste with very little of what we're, we don't give our guests the opportunity. We're still trying to get them to sort out the single street recycling with the trash. We leave that out there as well. Um, do the next one. And this is, I think, the one thing that we do different here. And uh, it's one of the things I think that probably proudest of, of what we bring through. We partnered with a local uh, company called Home Sweet Home Ministries. And in their old home, the last five years, they've seen an increase in meals that they're feeding to their people just exponentially raised. And I was out there at their thrift shop and was working with Sabrina, and I asked her, so why don't you have a little garden here for your folks? And we just don't have the room, and we grow these flowers, and they sell the flower seeds for marigolds and sunflowers. They call it Seeds of Hope. They sell them a little package of packages, and that money goes directly to their facility. Right about that time that this all rolled out, Home Sweet Homes went and bought out the old steak and shake warehouse in a huge parking lot. And what I would call green space, but it was more gravel space, kind of, with some grass growing on top of it. And we started talking about, hey, we'd love to try to see this thing go full circle. So we buy the food. We compost it, we send it off, it becomes the compost. I want to see it come back and go back to planting food again somewhere in the community and see how we can do it. So I might go to the next slide. So we partnered with several local companies. We 
partnered with Bellas Landscaping, we partnered with um, Stark Excavating, and you know, in ISU, obviously, with the compost, and there's a lot of other ones that help with the plants. So Bellas Landscaping came out and cleaned out the whole fence line. There's railroad tracks to the right of this, and they came in with bulldozers and backhoes and pushed everything out and kept the water out and gave us these circles, and then Stark Excavation came out and brought us what they call clean dirt. <laughs> Construction clean in my opinion would be two different thoughts, <laughs> but um, there was a lot of rocks and gravel and other items, but we were so thankful for what they brought out. Because the compost itself is very, very heavy in nitrogen. And I, if I'm wrong on that, it's going to tell you more, but it's, it's too hot to be able to go. So we had to mix it with this clean dirt. So they brought out the dirt and then uh, ISU donated three or four huge truckloads of the compost brought it out and we were able to mix it and again Bella's Landscaping, which was a great local um, uh, landscaper with us, was able to come and mix it in with the next one. So that's just one of the the compost with a lot of us. I think the gentleman on top of our interns, our ex-chef, who's now back up in Chicago and obviously made my kids go to work too. And Mary Ann, who runs Home Sweet Homes, and Brad, who's a client of theirs, but also runs the gardening center. Some of the things that they've done, you know, the little pictures that they sent out, pumpkin seeds that come, they still aren't producing necessarily a whole lot of food. It's only a year old. And last year with the drought, we had so many issues trying to get water. The nearest water source to this green space has got to be 150 yards away. A shed was donated, and we're going to work on it. I'm going to hit Michael up for maybe one of those mega rain harvesters to put on the end of this uh, uh, the shed that they built. It's a massive shed. It's as long as this room. We could collect enough water to then water it. But they used it to decorate their thrift shop, which is the small picture in the middle. And so they were able to bring in dirt and then compost and then mix that and do planters because most of their money comes from their thrift shop. And again, it's a store, so the nicer it looks, the more they're going to get in the field. So. And then starting to look at this year, and hopefully the next two weeks, we're going to take a whole group of our staff out to go out and try to get these gardens going up a little further. The top right picture, and actually I think if you go to the next slide, probably should. So this is, you can tell there's a lot of work to be done, but this was the start of it in the beginning, and this is just simply a butterfly garden that they wanted as their centerpiece, where they will harvest seeds from these different plants and then sell these seeds to local people so that they can earn money. And then the bar ones is where they're going to start looking at, we're going to look at planting you know, beans and some other staples where they can come out. But one of the things they do that's really neat is they take their clients, and their clients are then come to their facility, um, and the more they work, they earn honors to be able to do different things. And a lot of them can come work in the garden, get their hands on the top of the dirt, and be the ones that take care of these gardens and then bring the food back. So for us, this is just the very beginning. It's only the second spring last year. I'm surprised they had anything planted in there. Our goal this year is to get the garden back to the top of And for us, it's just, I think it's a great story of where, and eventually once we get to the next step, we can show where the scraps from your luncheon event today go back, they're scraped into there, they then head out to ISU, we get the compost, comes back, 